Smell that? It's time for a swing dance reaction video. No. 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 Yes! Greetings and salutations. Welcome to Street Smart Swing. My name is Jamin Jackson, also known as the Galactic Swing Dance Umpire! <laughs> and I am super elated to be scrutinizing another Lindy Hop video today. This time we are going to FSC 2020. We are looking at a solo jazz competition, which is one of my favorite things to watch. You get to see so much personality from dancers. It's going to be amazing. I can't wait to see it. Do not let your hearts be troubled. I will be telling you exactly who I think is the winner of this competition. So if you are someone who gets triggered by the truth, this is not the place for you. All right, we're going to dive right in. Florence Swing Camp. Jazz Competition Finals. Let's see, man, this is nine minutes. Nine minute solo jazz comp. It's gonna be interesting. I really like her. Her her footwork is kind of like raindrops. It's really like sprinkled in unexpected spots. As if maybe she's a tap dancer, but it's not as syncopated and predictable as a tap dancer. That's what I like so far. She has the perfect dress for shimmies. <laughs> Great. Hey, she's rocking that. It's not it's not easy to do that kind of move when it's slow like this. That's like a typical like fast Charleston. <laughs> yeah, I love stuff like that. It's really different and silly. I like that he's really uh, naturally tall and he's using his body in a way where I can't really tell. It's like he's really in control of his body. I like that hat too. <laughs> Double time, I like that. I can tell she's like dying to move fast. <laughs> I can tell she's gonna be pretty venomous 
when it gets down to that Charleston tempo. Whoever's in her way better watch out because she has a biting style. <laughs> it's, I love that. When people just go in and do the last move that person does. It's like a passive aggressive, like thump on the head. Boop! <laughs> My boy in the back with the hat, he's like, I'm not watching you, I'm dancing. So what I like about this dancer, he's got a tremendous amount of control and confidence and patience and he's just chilling. He's like, I got a bazooka, but I'm not gonna use it yet. We just don't know how long this competition is gonna be. We know this video is like 10 minutes long. <laughs> the people in the back on the couches are like, <laughs> that's so great. This seems like this was probably filmed kind of during the late part of the evening. I don't know. But I love uh, watching the audience. They're just kind of like, all right, <coughs> it's good. I'm tired. <laughs> All right, here we go. So I can only uh, speculate that they are going to make the tempo a little faster uh, so we can analyze them at a different tempo. Potentially, maybe they don't do that. Maybe they're just taking a break. And I'm right again. Here we go. <clears throat> All right, she was pretty consistent. That's two in a row for me that that I've noticed her. She's a real standout. I told you, she was. She's a Charleston dancer. She's ready. She had the shimmies, the shimmy dress. Yes. Okay, there that's the girl, yes. Yeah, she's uh a beast when it's fast. Mm. Alright, there he is again. pattern some of these dancers are just well suited for a faster tempo it's really hard to dance to mid-tempo songs so I'm really impressed with the ones that could do that and do it well
This sounds like a live band. I'm not sure if this is live or not. But it sounds like it based on the echo. I could be wrong on it. Yeah, it might be. <laughs> that was clever. Fun. That was really fun. I, you just never know what you're going to experience when watching a solo jazz competition. <clears throat> I will tell you that many cases when I'm watching a solo jazz comp, most of the dancers uh, don't know how to do solo jazz. They know how to dance solo by themselves and they happen to be interested in swing dancing. So they know a few of the, the solo jazz moves, but they end up kind of looking more hip hop or more like lyrical or like just street dancing. <clears throat> and that, I didn't see that much here. I was quite surprised to see so many who just knew the language of a lot of the old vernacular jazz movements. They even had the stillness of the upper body. That's one of the biggest technical things that I look at is just the quietness of the upper body. And the reason is, is because most of the dances in the vintage times focused on the waist down because of influences like tap um, and a lot of the vernacular jazz steps were influenced from tap. So when I can see modern dancers understand that, even if they know it, they understand it like you know, subliminally, they don't really know that's what they're doing, I still respect it. And I love the fact uh, when they do it. <clears throat> So I will tell you now, since everybody was doing that, they're all good. How do you actually judge a competition like this? That's the question you want to ask. I never asked that question you know, to a real person. I always asked it in my mind. How do you actually judge a competition when everybody is good? Well, there's certain things that we like and there's certain things that we don't like. And in that, we have to recognize at its basis, we are now moving into the realm of subjectivity. And even in doing this, there are some elements that appeal to everyone's eyes. And we, we all collectively may not have the same understanding of that reality, but there are some things that allow the dance to look quote unquote better or good um, to you. So let me share a little bit of those things that might help you understand why you liked certain dancers and why you did. There were a couple of dancers. I'm going to tell you my top three that I liked. Let me start with third place for me. Uh, my third place <clears throat> goes to uh, the gentleman with the nice hat. He had a really nice hat. I really liked his uh, weirdness. People say weirdness. Why would you call someone weird? I, I, I think weirdness is one of the most critical traits that you can have as a dancer. Some people might not like that word. So some people might like the word uniqueness. But a lot of times uniqueness is associated with intentionality, like you know what you're doing. But in many cases, you may not know what you're doing when you're improvising. And it's only the third party, which is the audience, who can actually see your uniqueness. And in many cases, it tends to be the things you don't like about yourself and your own dancing. So I like to use the word quirky sometimes. He had that quality to his movement that I'm not even sure he's aware of in many cases. But I liked that. He was the most authentic when I think about uh, someone who's not totally calculated with their sets. You know, they come out with their choreographed sets to make them look like they're improvised. He didn't really have a whole lot of that in my, in my mind. And that goes to his natural qualities, but it also goes to his weaknesses that I might see. Now, how do you, what would you call a weakness in this sense? Well, it's all subjective. For me, the second and most important thing is timing. Timing is huge. What are we doing timing for? Well, we're doing timing with the music, so the timing is for the music. So when the audience members watch it, there has to be something that they see you doing that amplifies the music or vice versa. And so I think his timing was a little off sometimes. Sometimes he'd clap on the wrong beat, and I thought it was because of he, him being weird and creative, but then I could see maybe a couple of moments after that that it wasn't really intended. And so then I would think, oh, okay, maybe, maybe he just needs some more work there on his timing. But ultimately, 
He's third place for me because he has the, one of the qualities that I like, and that is absolute uniqueness, not a derivative personality, putting on a front to be some dancer that you're not. He didn't have that. <clears throat> Just weird. He wasn't, even, he wasn't even paying attention sometimes to other dancers dancing. That's how much he feels the music. It's like, hey, I'm, I'm feeling the music first. I'm not just going to sit here and fake clap like I'm enjoying your dancing. He was really, most of the people doing this is like, you know, I'm going to destroy you in like three seconds. <laughs> You're dead. You're so dead. That's what it's like. And he didn't have that. He just was in the moment and enjoying himself. So I appreciate that. I appreciate that. So he was third place for me. Um, my, my other criticism for all of the dancers is that most of the people didn't know how to dance slow tempo. It's tough. It's harder to dance when you take away that <clears throat> energy level that's kind of expected and it kind of hides your ability to show rhythm. Like when it's fast, you can just hide some of the mistakes rhythmically. But if you're tap dancing slow and it's clear and, and precise, you can hear it. You can hear it. When it's fast, you can be like, ah, la, 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 cha. And we all go, man, that's amazing. You slow that thing down on, on your iPhone and you see it. You're like, oh, I see what's going on. So for me, I, I tend to look at the quality of all of the dancers as a whole. When I'm looking at these kind of competitions, I first really pay attention to that slow tempo. And I think everybody needed to work on it except for one dancer. So we'll get to who she is here in a minute. Uh, my number two dancer, I would have to say is, uh, man, there were just so many good ones. There were so many good ones for the technique, but there were just certain choices, certain ones made that I didn't personally like which is that bias that gets into judging because it is all subjective. But again, even though I don't like it, it doesn't mean that I can't judge you in a way that's fair and favorable. So if you're doing the timing stuff right and you've got the control, it shouldn't really matter if I liked your moves or not. That's just the extra icing on the cake. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, I didn't like uh, a lot of this dancer's movements in the second set. I thought... I thought there was a lot of wasted time, and I thought the the error and the swagger and the mode and the the feeling of what he was doing when it was faster mimicked when it was slower, and yet, but there wasn't a differentiating factor because he didn't add anything more on the faster one. That was the gentleman with the black suit, I think it was. Yes, yeah, black suit. It's got like purple and blue shirt. Loved his control. He had the control part and the confidence more than anybody else for me. And usually you can tell that is when they're not saying stuff because everybody can say stuff when it's fast, but when they refrain from doing them with doing that elegantly in a way where it's like, hey, everyone else is just going out there and doing it and you just stop and you say, well, I'm not gonna do that. I can, but I won't watch this instead. That's hard to fabricate. So he had that quality and his first set for me was great because he was able to show that quality in the first in the first set in a way where he had some crazy skill sets with that that I I didn't see coming. He was so reluctant to show something and then he just decided to throw some difficult things in there in the mix and that made it more appealing. The second set for me was the problem. He didn't really uh like the music modulates and goes up. He didn't really do that. I think it was it came across as being cocky the second time because it's like, I'm not going to speed up now. Everybody else is speeding up. Well, the music's clearly going faster. <laughs> I'm still not going to. It kind of came off like that a little bit, right? And I don't know if it was the posture. And I'm sure this dance is probably not like that at all. But it's weird how posture can do that in terms of judging competitions. Say, I don't like him or I don't like her because of her skirt or her hair or whatever, her attitude, right? But for me, that's the personal part I didn't like is that it was a lot of like swagger and coolness and toughness on the second set when it should have been a little bit more aggressive. Like, sure, I'll prove it. Here it is. I'll do it. It was more like I'm about to do something. It's like those B-boys that get out there and they start doing the up rocking and stuff and the other guys just stand there like waiting and then nothing really happens. That's what I kind of felt. 
on that. So I wished I could have seen, I, I don't know what it was. I wish I could have seen a little bit more from Miss Dancer on that second one because I probably would have had him really high because the potential to do was there, but it was only done in one set. So that's how I feel about it. That's how I feel about it. Now, let me get to uh, the dancer that I thought had the full package. Everybody else had the full package, but timing was off a little bit. Uh, their ability to dance to the slower tempos was off a little bit. I think the rest of the dancers kind of had the same problem. Timing with their sets were just a little off to amplify the music. And the, the, that part's really, really difficult to do. You could say a whole lot in moving, but in solo jazz, it's not just about moving. It's more about when you stop moving and what you decide to highlight in the music. So it's fair to say for me, upon scrutiny this very first time, Everyone else kind of had the same problem. So let me just skip to the, the number one dancer of all time at FSC 2020 Solo Jazz Competitions Finals. And I don't care what you think about it. because <laughs> She's my favorite one. Uh, she was, I believe, maybe the first dancer that came out. She had like a rose colored shirt, maybe like a, a, a scarlet colored uh, boots, black uh, uh, skirt, glasses. Um, she just had the full package for me in so many good ways. She had the confidence that was there. There, it was, there's just, that's the important part. You've got to have the confidence. She had that. She had the quality of the movement and, and controlling the upper body. But more importantly, she knew when to stop moving. She just simply knew when to do it. She also knew when to make her movements fancy versus making her movements repeat. Here's what I mean. A lot of these movements are amplified when you set up a very simple, conspicuous pattern where the audience can follow what you're doing. And then the moment when you change that pattern with anything that's different, all of a sudden amplifies everything you did previously to that. And so she didn't only just do that by amplifying uh, something fancy by you know following it with <coughs> amplifying something that was a pattern with something fancy she knew when to go back down and take it back down to something simple and rhythmic she had a subtle rhythmic nature to her movement that wasn't too derivative of tap she wasn't just like doing the same you know Hollywood tap style she was doing a lot of jazz movements that I would say are more like vintage where I can call the names for them, but they were syncopated. That was cool. I haven't seen a lot of people move that way. Seems like her knees and her shoulders were connected together. Every time her left shoulder would move, her right knee would do something, her right would go, and she would just kind of move around. And she felt for me like it was like a like a puppet on strings. That's the way her dancing was. And it was just so elegant. And, and like I said, it was like raindrops. It was like sprinkled rhythms. And that's beautiful when you have control and you have a personality that's consistent. She was the same person when it was slow and the same person when it was fast. And I appreciate that. So she had the control. She had the timing. I think the creativity was not so much in the shapes. I think the creativity that stood out to me was in her rhythm choices. I think that was the key for me. So those are the three components I obviously look for. And she had those better than everybody else. And therefore, she gets my trophy, guys. I, I wonder what her name is. She's amazing. Uh, and I hope she continues to just keep dancing it's because more people need to see good dancing. I think that's one of the things that's missing is really unique, good dancing. Good being unique, not just technical where you know how to do it. All these dancers know how to do it. But uniqueness is the thing that's missing. And so if you are one of those dancers that's suffering from that, I would encourage you to check out some of my free courses below. I got like 30 free courses. You can get some inspiration because that's what I do. I spend the majority of my time coming up with new ways to do Lindy Hop, new ways of moving. That's what this is all about. And so hopefully you can be inspired by that. If you guys are struggling just to get better at the dance and you're like, hey, I've been doing this for four years and I'm still working on a swing up. My connection's not right. I can't follow and do fancy stuff at the same time. I spent hours 
over 10,000 hours trying to demystify Lindy Hop, and I encourage you to check out my Fundamentals membership. It will help you rapidly accelerate your learning curve so that you know how to fix yourself when you're social dancing and you won't have that feeling of always needing affirmation from a person like me or another teacher. You will know the principles and you'll have a streamlined approach to be able to fix yourself. That is the power and that's what's going to unlock you so that you can get into the zone of creativity and find your mark. So check that out if you want to do that. What did you guys think about this video? I thought it was a pretty long competition. I'm glad the, I'm glad the length was not symmetric to the tempo because I would have died if all these dancers had to dance like nine minutes straight, super hard, tempo super fast. So uh, I thought it was great. Let me know what you guys thought about this in the comment section. If you like what you're seeing on the channel, make sure you subscribe at the end of this video. It's gonna be a nice little graphic at the end. If you guys wanna support the channel, you're like, hey, I don't swing dance, but I love this. This is really entertaining. I get some education, I get some laughs, I learn about swing music, I get to watch some great dancing. Support the channel. You can do that as low as $5 a month. It's really great, it really helps. I got a lot of editing to do, a lot of dancing and choreography to do, and just every little bit helps make this process easier so that you can enjoy these great YouTube videos. So with that said, if I don't see your guys' comments in the section below, hopefully I'll get a chance to see you in one of my videos and classes. Take care.